Hi, I'm Eric with Narrow Road Van Conversions, and this is Derek. We've got a little bit different build here that we're going to show you today. Derek's the craftsman on this project. Why don't you come on in and have a look around? Right off the bat, you'll notice the contrast with some of our other builds, we typically have the kitchen over here, but with this build, we put the kitchen on the driver's side. The customer in this case was looking for a much more open feel with natural finish, round edges, and this is kind of what we came up with. So right here at the countertop, actually we have a control switches for under cabinet lights. So there's a bank for the counter in the kitchen and then there's a separate bank that goes over the bed and then there's another bank of lights that run right down the center of the ceiling here as we're looking at the sink here it's a undermount sink with actually an end grain cutting board for the insert One nice feature about this sink is we have actually a filtered faucet for drinking water and then the sprayer and, and common sink for just general use if you're washing dishes or filling a pot for cooking. Under the sink here we have a trash can. That's kind of a unique feature for this build. It actually just tips and slides back. As we're moving back we have the, the stovetop burner. That folds up like so, and here we have two burners. Got some stainless steel on the back of that flip up. That's kind of nice. In behind the garbage can, there's also some room back there. You want me to pull that up? Yeah, go ahead and pull it up and out. That comes up and out, and then it can reveal some water filtration and the propane are right back and in there. We can see that there's a lot of birch in this build that was a customer request um, we like the accent with this teak countertop and the teak countertop matches the flooring quite nicely too just as a little bit of an accent and then there's a bit of an off-white on the walls the upper cabinets are a Baltic birch we also sloped the ceiling in this build with a nice curve heading up to the front cab area. I guess it shows how versatile we are at Narrow Road Band Conversions, that we can accommodate different requests, uh, different aesthetics. All right, so the upper cabinets, again, pretty straightforward, just a air piston holding everything up. They all open the same, they all catch the same. And then in the center here, we have a microwave that's actually mounted in. It's a smaller model, but it'll get the job done. And then as we go back, it's just three more doors, three more cabinets. Above the door, we have kind of a small little control panel, monitors your solar input, also controls your ball valve to drain the gray water tank. And here we have an additional switch for exterior power if the customer wants to use that in the future. As we're looking forward, we have two blackout curtains picked out by the customer. These drop down like so, offer a nice privacy and darkness if you just want it to be nice and shady in here. Yep, there's two of them. So they're mm. extra big, they can get tucked up on the dashboard and, and they cover enough to go along the sides and cover the side windows too if you want to include those front chairs in the room. This build only has one swivel seat. The driver's seat is fixed in this case. Um, but here we have a lagoon mount table, bolts in right here, and swivels in like so. This is just something available if you're getting rained out or if you just want to do some little work on your laptop. Um, just something nice to have that's also stowable and can be removed completely. Okay, as you look in this, at the ceiling in this van, we have two vent fans, 
for a little extra airflow because in this build we opted to not have bed windows and, and actually have a little more airflow overhead. As we're looking farther back, you'll see that we have a couple reading lights above the bed, above the head side of the bed, and then actually a loop in the back. That was a special request just to be able to hang a hammock out the back door if you happen to pull the van up to a nice tree that looks good and strong. Up here, of course, just a little handle to help you get in and out of bed. As we're looking at the bed, it actually props up. It gives you the ability to take a look at some of the mechanical stuff. In here, we've got a master power switch. We've got a master um, fuse. We've got a smart solar charge controller for the two 175 watt Renergy solar panels on the roof with the roof rack. Here's the back of the fuse box, which we'll show you from the garage area. Below that, we've got an Orion charger that charges the batteries from the alternator. And on this wall, we got a couple of bus bars, a couple of breakers, one's for the Orion, one's for the solar charge controller. There's the 3000 watt inverter on this side over here. And below that are the batteries. We'll have Derek show you this how this counter works, which you can kind of see here. Over on this side is the water compartment. We really maximized the garage space in this van, which we'll show you in a little bit when we go around the back. Over here is the plumbing, which is all blocked off. You can't see it from the back garage area. There's no shower in this van, obviously, so hot water wasn't a big priority in this van. So what we did is we did a heat exchanger where the radiator fluid flows up and flows through this heat exchanger and heats the water worked out really really nice when the vehicle's running you have endless hot water this is a thermostatic valve for adjusting the temperature of the water the radiator fluid coming through is very hot too hot to be regular hot water so it mixes with the cold water to make it a, a temperature and you can adjust this knob here to get the right hot water down below there's some more valves a water pump and whatnot and some extra space in here if you wanted to store some things in here we'll drop the bed back down to its regular location here also the pull out counter it's the same material as the countertop it slides back into its own pocket and on the back side there's a ball catch that'll actually hold this locked in place it makes a nice click sound when you shut that. Below it, it's just three drawers, a lot of storage space for this one. And then just next to that is the bed step that also doubles as a cassette toilet. Stepping outside to take a look around the outside, we forgot to mention that this is a 144 high top um, it's not extended. You can see up on the roof, we've got a deck up there, a couple of cutouts for the roof vents, and two 175 watt Renergy solar panels up there that are charging our batteries pretty nicely right now. Moving around the outside, it's a nice color gray. Over here, we have the shore power inlet you can plug into this and the inverter will automatically switch over to charging the batteries and then the power coming in from the shore power will power all the outlets moving around the back here looking in to the garage area so hopping up here in the back you can see over here we've got an outlet back here which is nice so you can plug things in run a cord out lots of power in this van there's four 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battleborne batteries in there so there's a lot of power in here especially considering that we don't have any air heat in here and no water heater so those are two big draws that are gone from this build there is the microwave but this is plenty of battery to run the microwave moving over here we've got a fuse box here the fuse box 
is DC and AC. Here are our DC fuses and then our AC fuses. Um, we showed you from the uh, top view that this is the electrical side, so you saw in that compartment already. Uh, moving across here, here's that pull out table that we saw uh, earlier. Uh, this is the back side of those drawers. Here is the water tank, a little bit smaller water tank in this one because there's no shower. So it's a 20 gallon. Uh, it sits in here nicely. It's all um, encased with uh, birch. A slot cut out so you can see the water level. We looked down inside the plumbing area here. We've got a little door that opens up and you can see the rest of it. There's some valves in here and We've really uh, come up with an ingenious way of running water valves. Down here, you can see we've got, um, I'm gonna call it an inlet. So we can plug a water hose into this and this is how you fill the water tank. By operating a series of these valves here, and here's our key up here on what position all the valves need to be in, uh, depending upon what scenario you're running. I'll run through the scenarios right now. One is just general use, right? You're just running the water. Um, the next one is I call suck from bucket. So if you're somewhere out uh, running around and you don't have a hose, but you have a five gallon bucket or a water station where you can fill up six gallon jugs, you can bring those jugs over here, connect a hose up down into here, configure your valves into that configuration and you can actually turn on and off the water pump and the water pump will then suck the water up out of that bucket through this input and fill your water tank. Uh, the next scenario would be just fill from a hose. That'd be a water hose just going in and the pressure from the water hose fills your water tank. The bottom is also city water. So if you're gonna stay somewhere for a real long time at a RV park, maybe for the entire summer, you can hook a water hose up into that and you can run endless water. So we're pretty proud of that water system and the valve system we have, very versatile. Uh, we talked about the bed flipping up here and back to face forward. Thanks for coming along on this walkthrough with us. If you're interested in having a custom built van to your exact specifications, feel free to reach out to me uh, in the email below in the description, and I'd be happy to get a quote out for you. On behalf of Derek, Eric of Narrow Road Van Conversions, see you on the road.